In this video, I'll show you how to make a basic Google Form quiz from scratch. And then in future videos, we'll layer on the complicated bits on top of that. So uh, first things first, go to Google Drive. You just need to make sure that you're logged in, hit the new button, and then just Google Forms. So all Google Form quizzes begin as a Google Form. What you just need to do before you get started is click on the settings tab and just make it into a quiz by sticking on this toggle. You then have some questions that you just need to be clear about before you release it to students. So I'll walk you through some of these now, but you can set them later on if you want to. So first things first is, do you need to have any input into the marking? So if it's simply multiple choice questions all the way through, the answer to that is probably not. But if you're gonna put any longer answer questions in there, then you might want to toggle that on to after you have uh, mark those questions that that need teacher input and then you can release the scores together. Another reason for doing this is if you want all of the students to receive their scores all at the same time. Um, so even if it was completely multiple choice and it is all marked by the system, you might still want to toggle that onto later so that all of the students release, get their feedback all at the same time. Um, down here are subtleties uh, for instance when they get their feedback do you want them to be able to um, see all of the different things or do you want to restrict some of it personally I just leave it all turned on but that's up to you when we're making the quiz in a minute it's going to be constantly asking you how many points for each question um, I would default that to one um, it's a nice safe default to go to, um, it, it prevents you from defaulting to zero, which can be a pain sometimes. Down here under responses, uh, you probably do want to collect the students' email addresses because that allows you to make sure that it's only available to students in your own school. And you can also toggle this on so that students can only uh, respond once. Uh, you might or might might not want them to do it more than once, but often it, it's once only. You probably want to leave editing the responses off, otherwise they'll change their scores once they know what the correct answers are. Um, and then do you want them to receive a copy by email or not? So as you might have seen in the last video, the uh, option is for them to view it on screen, but do you want them to have uh, it emailed to them as well? Up to you. If you've got multiple pages in your quiz and it goes on for a long time, you might want to let the students know how many, how far through the quiz they've got. Quite often, most of these quizzes are just on a single page, however, and that's not necessary. If you are letting students do a multiple choice quiz in class and they're all sitting next to each other, or if you're just worried that they're all on WhatsApp um, sharing uh, answers as they're doing it for homework, you can shuffle the question order and that means that as they move through it, they're all on different questions at different times, which can be really helpful to avoid that. However, sometimes when you write your quizzes, you want it to ramp in difficulty or you want one question to lead on from another question because the questions are in the order that you delivered them in class or something like that, in which case you might not want to shuffle that, but it's an option. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, this is the message that they'll see when they've had it. So it defaults to that one, which isn't particularly helpful to a student. So you might want to change it to something like, well done, now review your feedback. And spell it correctly. And you might want to suggest that they do their green pen work as well. Um, we've disabled, or, or on this one, we've disabled uh, submitting another response, but if you do want them to do the quiz more than once, you can toggle that on so that uh, they've got a quick link at the end of the quiz to have another go. And I usually leave this one turned off because generally I don't want them to be able to see what the rest of the class have done. They don't see any names with that, but they do see percentages um, as to who got the right answers, who got the wrong answers for each question. I usually leave that turned off and I go through that myself in class. Up to you then. 
Down the bottom here are default settings for when you make new quizzes. So if you have some favorite settings that you want to just be replicated every time you do your quiz, you can set them here. Okay, so that takes care of the basic settings. Now, how do you actually make the quiz? So first things first, um, give it a title. So um, we'll just call this example quiz. And you probably also want to just click up here and then it'll take whatever you wrote here and turn it into your file name for your quiz. And that will turn up in Google Drive as well so that you can find it again afterwards. You can edit that if you want to so that it's different to what you've actually written here. You can also write a description. So for instance, here is the one that we looked at in the last video. There's my title. And there's just a little message for the kids when they first see the quiz. It just gives them a kind of intro into what they're doing. You don't have to fill that in. You can leave it blank, but it's kind of a settler to get the students uh, ready for what they're going to do. And also you can add some specific instructions. So here's a more complicated one. Um, so the students here might need to um, give powers of 10 in their answers and I've just given a little instruction into how they can type that because there isn't unfortunately a rich text editor and so if they're going to be having to use Greek letters uh, for their units or prefixes or um, superscripts I've just given them a little instruction there at the beginning. I usually start all of my quizzes by asking them to give me their name. Now to be honest, this isn't strictly necessary because I also set it to collect their email addresses. But sometimes it's not that easy to decode which student is which from just their email address alone. Um, so I usually just explicitly ask them to put their surname and their first name in. You may decide that that's necessary or not with a little bit of experience of how you use the quiz yourself. Okay, so once you have um, set the quiz up, and you have started it off, the next bit is going to be answering some questions and I've got a, a, writing some questions, sorry, and I've got a separate video for writing the questions. So just while we're on this little bit, some other little settings that we can do. If you click up here on the kind of palette, you can change the theme. So you can change the, the background colors and you can um, change the font if you want to, I suspect it's easier to leave it as it is, to be honest. You can also pick a, if I show you the blank one, you can choose an image for your header. You can upload your own image, but they um, have dozens of ones that you could pick. So I mean, it doesn't matter, does it? We can choose one and insert it, and it just pops it in at the top. So that'll probably do for this video, which is just the idea of creating the Google Form quiz and tweaking the settings. In the next video, we'll go on to how to actually write the questions.